Hey, my name is Pinky Gilani, and you are watching Pinky TV. This is What Women Want, and of course, we are on season three, where the theme is unlearn. These conversations are brought to you by SBM Bank Kenya, and we are filming at Gem Suites in Nairobi, Kenya. If you are on Facebook, make sure you let us know where you are watching from. Drop a comment, you know, and give us some feedback as well. If you are on YouTube, subscribe to this channel as well. We get, need to get those numbers up. And um, if you do subscribe to this channel, you'll be the first to catch conversations like these. I'm super excited today. I'm holding a beautiful book in my hand, Everyday Rays, a ray for every moment, season and life. 100 life-changing devotions. And the author is Josephine Curry Masharia, who is our guest today. Hey, girl. Hi, thank you. How are you? <laughs> How are you? I'm oh, fine. It's so good to be here. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you for having me. No, of course. Okay, first of yes. all, congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. This is amazing. Oh, thank you. I'm so, so, you know, happy that I'm holding it in my hands <laughs> because I was actually keen to oh, see it. Oh, awesome. But, um, you know, the whole theme, like I said before, is unlearn. I love that. And a lot of us as women, um, and sometimes even men, we're not taught to celebrate ourselves or oh. to introduce ourselves, if mm -hmm. you will. Mm -hmm. So I would like you to take this opportunity to introduce yourself to our audience. I love that challenge and I love the theme. When I heard you saying unlearn, I said, that's brilliant because that's, we're in a season where we need to unlearn to relearn what Absolutely. we need to know. Yes. Thank you for the challenge. <laughs> Hello everyone, as you've heard, my name is Josephine Kare Masharia and I'm the founder and director of Bluegrass Solutions, Pit Stop Forum, and I'm also a program manager at Better for Kenya. Yeah, girl. <laughs> and a published author. Sorry, and an author. I need to start getting used to that. Yes. yes, and an author of my first book. I believe there'll be many more to come. Amen. Yes. This is a corona baby. Yes, it is. So it's amazing how many Kenyan women have come out Absolutely. with their own books. Absolutely. I love it. I love that we have more Kenyan, you know, female authors mm -hmm. as well. I think um, as women, and I'll speak to women because I can relate to them, we have so much knowledge, but to your point, what you said earlier, we are always, whether it's fear or imposter syndrome, and you're thinking, I can't write a book, what do I have to offer? Yet when we are sitting having coffee, or when we are gathering with our friends, the gem of wisdom and knowledge that he shared, if someone was to record, it'd be there like, wow, yeah. that was profound. So I think there's a place where we need to gather all that and put it somewhere, just so that it's not only for you and your clique, that it will, impact and empower generations to come. So put it down. And what I learned is that it took me a long time to write the book because I kept thinking, hmm, uh, what if my English is not right? What if people criticize this? And I thought, you know what? All I'm sharing is what I know. You can't go outside of the truth that I know and the journey I have walked. And you know what? If it helps one person, then it was worth it. So you then have to shut out all the noise, all the comparing. And it's interesting you said that when I was rushing to finish my book, almost every other month I would see someone saying, launched my book. I'd be there like, oh, man, so why should I launch mine? And I, I had this idea of maybe I push it to 2021. Then I said, you know what? Their topic is different from mine. And even if we're sharing the same topic, so what? The analogy I give is, um, and I stand corrected, but I think it's Moy Avenue. It's an ent there's a part of the street that has so many fish and chips shops, right? But if we went into town right now, Pinky, you'll enter yours and I'll enter mine. Maybe you like yours because they give you the toothpick when you're eating. Maybe I like mine because I don't use bar soap, which everyone has touched, they have liquid soap but they're all making money, they're all busy. That's the same thing. It doesn't matter if we all wrote about the same thing. Your style and the way you deliver is totally different. Your audience is different. So if there's a book in you and it looks like that topic, topic sorry, has been overwritten or over uh, spoken over, go ahead and do it. Your style is different, it's needed. There's an audience saying, I don't connect with this, they're waiting on you. Amazing. Yes. That is really, really amazing. Yeah. I, um, I want to ask you, Josephine, first of all, yes. there are two questions. Okay. Um, and I don't want to, because I'm being extremely forgetful today. <laughs> um, one question is, uh, did you want to write this book for a while? Okay. 
Okay, question number one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Second question is, is it Corona the, or the pandemic or the year 2020 and what happened to the world that kicked your butt into doing this? Very interesting. Um, I've wanted to write this book for a very long time. So I got the name for the book, October 31st, 2015. I know I'm wow. that person. I write down everything and the dates. But then um, the journey to the book was me now getting on social media and sharing every day. And with that, what I was doing is cre like practicing my writing skill and just finding out what kind of a writer do I want to be? Do I want to be like a deep writer, Shakespeare, or do I want to be a relational writer, which is what I think, and maybe I'm creating names here, but <laughs> where yeah. my writing is relatable, where someone will read and be there like, hmm, it feels like you know my story, how did you know this? So I then began gathering all that information. But when I was ready to write the book, what helped during COVID was that the world was shut down. So now I had no excuse. Prior to that, we were so busy, like um, whether it was pit stop, the different projects we were doing. And just when you finish one thing, you roll into the next, you roll into the next. So I always had an excuse, but now it was, okay, you have nothing but time. You need a time, here is all the time you need. So I sat down, gathered my journals, cause I journal a, ro a lot and started wondering what part of my life do I want you to share in the book? What I thought when I was gathering my journals is that I'll extrapolate some stories to be in the journal, cause in the devotional, because I knew I needed to collect a hundred stories. Shock on me. That was a healing journey. I realized there are so many things in my life where I had gotten stuck, things I needed to relearn, things I misinterpreted, things in my life where I got stuck, I needed to interrogate and ask myself, is that what really happened? Why did I take? So there was growth, healing, tears, maturing to then this book. So this book, the journey, I'd say took a year, a year and a half, but putting it together and going to print took 10 days. Wow. I know, crazy. Because <laughs> then I told myself, I don't care if it's November, this book must be done in December. So I shut out everything. And um, I gave myself a timeline. At my workstation, I had the sign, get it done, 12-12-2020. And December 11th, the book was at print. And power of your mind, when you say you're doing something, all limitations fade off. But I'd say, had I not gone through that journey pre-COVID and during COVID, this would probably be a very shallow, it would have been so, we can't relate or, yeah, so this, allowed it to have more weight, so to speak. So there's, there's something you've said in there that's scraped the surface of my next question, okay. right? And that is the, the self-talk mm -hmm. when you're getting something like this done, uh, where you're like, okay, I've got this in my office, but what is that talk where you're like, okay, Josephine, this is what we're gonna do. You, you've, you've, said, you've talked about, you know, um, it could be similar or is my writing great? Or, so you've talked about the doubt that you may have had, but what do achievers say to themselves in order to achieve? So I'll mention a couple of things. So one, you need to surround yourself with the right people. People who, when you don't think you can do it, they keep telling you, not only can you do it, but you're going to do it. Secondly, I did something very crazy. I went to Keswick Bookshop and I asked them, is it okay if I pose, pose by one of your bookshelves? Cause I'm writing a book and this will inspire me. So he looked at me like, you're slightly crazy, crazy. but go, I know, <laughs> but it's okay, go ahead. Thanks. So I took one of their books and I posed so that every time I looked at that book, it was to remind me, you need, you're the next author and you need to hold your book. I recently went back about two weeks, only this time took the same shot, but okay. now holding my book. So for me, I'm very visual, being a creative, I need to keep seeing it. So that when I have moments when I'm thinking, oh, I haven't told anyone, a few people know I can get away with it, 
what is that that is in front of me? I'm a sucker for quotes. So one of my best quotes is by Nelson Mandela. It always looks impossible until it's done. So I have all these quotes all over just so that when I feel like I can't do it, I remember it has been done, it can be done, and it will be done. I have one that says, I can, I will, end of story. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. that's it, like, get it done. Yeah. So those are some of the tools that have really, um, that really helped and just, like, they keep you focused and keep you going because we are human. You'll have days when you're there, like, I don't feel like writing. I tried what everyone says, write a little every day. I guess I'm that person for studying for KCSE <laughs> 11th <laughs> hour. So, yeah, so I think do what works for you, but yeah. just get it done. So what I did is, I may not have been physically writing, but unbeknown to me, I was already gathering the information mentally. Everywhere I went, I was always jotting down. So it would be my iPad. My I always had, oh, that should be in the book. So I was always alert and conscious. So you were always writing the book. Yes, always. So I'll have coffee with Pinky, and there's something you'll say that will either challenge me or trigger me, and I'll say, you know what, that, would, that should be in the book. Because mm -hmm. the book is divided into five themes, everyday series, everyday life, everyday work, everyday God, and everyday love. So I'd be there like, mm, that's good for this. And we keep saying, um, we are the sum total of many people. So what you learn, will challenge me in a different way. I'll share it and someone else will interpret it in their situation and in what they need to hear and it will get them going. Yeah. Yes. Another thing that I heard while you were speaking is that your journals were yeah, important. Absolutely. And how you were able to look back yes. at who you were. Yes. And you were able to measure your growth, if you will. Um, how important is it for us to journal? Oh, wow. Journaling is everything. We recently did a campaign around mental health, and I realized that it gets to a point where at times I think it's hard to talk to people. So today I'll come and talk to you and tell you this is what I'm going through. You'll listen. By day three, you're there like, um, mm -hmm. like, don't you have a solution? Like, come on, mm -hmm. let's talk about something else. So it gets to a place where journaling is one very therapeutic it's almost like you're doing a brain dump and when you write everything down what may have been a crisis or weighing heavily on you it's amazing how when you read it it changes your perspective or as you're writing it you're you're already getting solutions so there's something powerful about journaling the other thing about journaling is there are times you really can't see a way out but then pick that journal two days later and you're there like wait a minute actually have a solution for this mm -hmm. so there's something about journaling that um it takes a weight off you so that what you're carrying ceases to be heavy if you don't do that you're just accumulating so much and one day you'll just crumble so journaling i say is amazing and what i say is there's no there's no right or wrong way to journal if you want to journal there are people who journal in bullet form they just write bad day stressed i need to figure this out that's, that's okay yeah. there are people like me manuscript about upon manuscript i have this thing where at the beginning of the year i try and buy if I find a journal design I like, I'll buy like five of them so that I know this was for 2020. Yeah. So do you, but just journal. There is something amazing. I've also heard of couples who journal and they're able to share between spouses. So it may be something that's so heavy that annoyed me that I can't articulate because I don't want it to escalate into something worse. I'll write it down. He'll then take it, read and respond. So there you've already had a, yes. Communication. Exactly. You, you brought up mental health, which I think is important. It is. Why do you feel, and I'm assuming you feel this, yes. that we're not having enough conversations around mental, am I right in that assumption? Absolutely, <laughs> you're right. It's uh, for the longest time ever, especially in African societies, we have this saying that every village has <laughs> their madman, right? So you, you want to hide. It's something that's frowned upon. No one will want to associate with you. Mm -hmm. People don't. OK, so I, I'll say this, but I'll validate it. So people don't openly share the mental 
illnesses they are going through. However, we have a generation of millennials and Gen Z who have changed that, where they'll openly share, I'm anxious, um, I need help, I'm not, I'm not okay. The older generation, Gen X and baby boomers, we were raised in a generation that was all about merit. It was all about what number were you, where are you working, what school are your children going to? So there was no way you saying you have a mental condition was synonymous to you saying, I'm a failure. I can't figure this out. What do you mean you can't figure it out? Yet a class full of 30 people have figured it out. What's wrong with you? But I think we need to move away from that and understand that one, mental illness, one, can be a, a health condition. Two, it's treatable. Three, you probably know someone with a mental condition, but they've never spoken about it. So being having a mental condition does not mean you'll be you know, an invalid, you'll not be able to operate properly. So I think there's a mind shift that needs to happen. There's more education that needs to be given so that people realize, oh, wait, actually I was depressed and I didn't know. I thought I was just having a series of bad days. Mm. No. So I think call it what it is so that then you know how to address yeah. it. There is no shame in seeing a therapy. Yeah. Absolutely none. Yeah. You're not crazy. You're not weird. Go see a therapy if yeah. you need to. And I love what um, one pastor said. Many people will run to the church, but the pastors are trained to heal your soul. Yes. A therapist is different. Trained to, yeah. Exactly. So go to the right person who can heal your condition. Yes. I yes. completely agree. Yeah. And it's really valid what you've said as well about the different generations. And I'm questioning because yes. you see like for me i think i fall in gen x, x. Yes. yes and um and then of course i've seen it with the millennials who are more free and open with their emotions but i wonder if us as parents now you know like a gen x as a parent will bring up their children the same way that i was brought up and the millennials will bring up their children the same way i wonder if you'll see a repetition in this what are your thoughts? It's very interesting you say that. I think we're already beginning to see that because if you look at the millennials, they're like a hybrid of the baby boomers in the, in the way they behave. Really? So Gen oh. Xers, we are very, we are the, what do you call it, the tr like latchkey kids, very troublesome. We were told, take care of your sibling. <laughs> you're in charge of this. So right now you're there like, what? Mm. Get your act together. I'm not babysitting you mm. like I did that in my life. So I think there is a place where if we're not careful, we will repeat the same mistakes. So instead of taking the good side of each generation and prioritizing that and emulating that, we'll find ourselves because you don't know any better. All you know is that what you know, what you know. Yeah. So I love when Gen Xers are there like, oh, I need help in this. What? I didn't have. Uh, Google, I had to figure it out on my own. <laughs> so what if that happened? You know, it's like uh, my dad would tell us, oh, we walked many miles to school without yeah. shoes. So imagine if today he said, you guys are going to school without shoes so that you understand what I went mm. through. That's what we are doing. So I think there's a place where our parents didn't know any better. They were raised by baby boomers. So yes. sit and see what was good. The thing with Gen Xers is responsibility. They have, um, they're hard workers. Take that and teach those values to your children. But all these other things, just be there like, no, I know better. Yeah. Then the flip side, what can we learn about millennials? I know we've said it's all about me, me, me. The world revolves around them. No, but they don't. Like you tell a millennial, jump, they'll jump. Like they are ready, they are ready to change, recalibrate. They thrived in 2020. We are thinking, huh? But I've been at this job for 15 years. What do you mean I need to start from ground zero? Mm -hmm. So every generation has a good side. It's to learn that and um, ride on that as opposed to having a hybrid because then it will keep getting worse. Yeah. That's what I would say. I think so. And I think also we have to be very intentional. Absolutely. Of our flaws. Yes. We have to be aware of our flaws and intentional to be able to remedy. And it takes courage. It takes courage to say I'm not good in this. It takes yeah. courage to say I suck here. That yeah. takes a lot. It does. Because then you're programmed to always, I want to be the best. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's also nothing wrong with failure. So I think we need to change the narrative we were conditioned with. 
that failing is bad. Mm. Failing is a good thing. Failing is okay. Yes, but it takes so long. By the time you're realizing it, you're there like, I wish I had learned that when I was mm. young. I would have done so much more because with every failure, it cripples you and you keep saying, let me stick to my lane. Yeah, Before you know be it, yes. Before you know it, it's not a lane; it's a step. Let mm -hmm. me stick to my step because it keeps shrinking. My I square. know my yeah. square. So, which is so sad because a lot of people have stopped becoming because they were told, "Hey, I failed enough. I can't." And people around you keep telling you, "Are you sure, Kare? You want to try again?" The last five times you weren't. Imagine shut out that noise Negative and thing. yeah. But it takes courage. It needs you to go to a place within where I'll be my own cheerleader. So do you think this is what we need to unlearn? Yeah, one of the many things we need to unlearn. One of the many things yes. we need to unlearn. And know that it's okay because it may get lonely, let's be honest, where everyone walks away, but it's okay. You be crazy alone, they'll understand later. Yeah. And to know that there are times where it takes you to look crazy to convert an entire clique or group. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. To be able to understand the madness. Yes, and to were. allow people to break through. Maybe you're the pace setter, that's why no one can see yeah. what you're seeing. Elude. But it takes, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Ab perfect example. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yes. So I'm gonna read, um, okay. this is actually the f how your book begins. Okay. Right? Life is a series of tiny little miracles. Notice them. Life is a series of commas, not periods. Life is a series of defining moments, crossroads and gateways as each door closes and new ones open. Life is a series of memories that once were just simple moments. Life is a series of baby steps. Life is a series of adjustments. You can make changes along the way, but if you don't start moving forward, you will never get anywhere. Life is a series of triumphs and disappointments. Once you harness the disappointments, your triumphs will be greater. Life is a book. Every day is a new page. Every month is a new chapter. Yeah. Every year is a new series. Yes. That was inspired by, I'm not a movie <laughs> junkie, but the few times when I watch is it Sirai, series? What's a blue, plural Which word? One? When you have to say oh, a series. Series is, I don't yeah. know, series. <laughs> yeah. not series. So like every time I watch, um, <laughs> there's all, yes, a yeah. series. There's always, um, you're getting into the plot, getting to know the characters. Mm. Then uh, you get accustomed to who's the bad person, the good person. Can we just make reference to Bridgerton? Okay, I haven't watched that. Okay. Can you leave? I know, I know, I know, don't worry. <laughs> no, <I'm> Next. <laughs> so then there's always a moment for, oh my goodness, plot twist, I didn't see that coming. And at times life is like that, not at times, life is like that. Yeah, we go through different uh, series in our life mm -hmm. and at times um, it's easy to get stuck in one and think that this is the end, my chapter ends here. But you forget that your chapter is still being written and you're a key character like you need to go on. But to also realize that the character or the way you began is not the way you're going to end. You're always learning, you're always becoming, you're always morphing into someone else. So it's easy when you're going through t the motions to meet people, quote unquote, in a different scene and feel, I want to be in that scene, not knowing that a curveball is about to be thrown to yeah, at right them, right? The face, yeah. Exactly. So it's just um, understanding that if I'm in this season or this series in my life, make the most out of it. It may be an uncomfortable season, but at times you grow in the discomfort. If it's a season of celebrating, celebrate and maximize it because then there'll be a, there may be a season of hardship. And to know that if I'm in a down season and you're in a season of celebration, celebrate with you. Mm -hmm. Don't be here, you know. Moping and groaning and. And feeling bad mm -hmm. and cutting you off. No, 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 no. Just embrace, learn to embrace. So in there I've shared different stories of people who went different, through different series in life, just so that you can glean from them. What did they do? How did they get out of them? How did they deal with the low seasons, the high seasons, the meh seasons mm -hmm. when you're thinking, just going through the motions, because we all have that. Mm -hmm. But whatever you do, 
remember it's always unfolding. Yes. Always. Nothing is permanent. Absolutely Even not. with this pandemic, it is not permanent. And that's what I had to keep reminding people last year is that mm. if it calls for you to reinvent, yes. then by all means, step up to the challenge and yes. do it. Yes. Instead of sitting around and playing victim and throwing yourself a pity party. Which doesn't help. That and doesn't. it's okay if you take longer than everyone else to figure it out. That's okay. Yeah. But by all means, figure it out. Yeah. Don't get stuck. And that was another thing that, you know, a lot of um, talk around 2020 was, you see, like a, lo a lot of people that I've spoken to have come out with, they've become authors, etc. But there were some people who achieved nothing. And that's also uh -huh. okay. Yeah. Maybe it was your year of rest. And yes. that's how I look at it, where you're always on the move. And it may look n like now that you came out of it with nothing, but later on you'll be there like, actually, mm. I discovered me, or I discovered My a gift, family. or thank you, yeah. or a talent I didn't have. So I think um, saying nothing came out of it, no, dig deep. I think we were all affected in one way or another. Yeah. We had the positive, we had the negative. We all got to a place where, what they call it, cabin fever, like I just need to get out. Yes. And then we had a place where you look back and say, when I look back at 2020, what do I want my story to be? What will I say I did? Yeah. Like, it's like the world, it's like God gave the world a gap here. Mm -hmm. What will my story be? Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, if it was rest or if it was nothing, you have to be kind enough to yourself and say that's okay. I like that. Yeah, yeah not to benchmark yourself against other Anyone. people. That's true. Yeah. Because, I love it. You know, it was traumatic. It was. Whatever happened last year was extremely traumatic. No, it was absolutely. Uh, there's something else mm -hmm. in here now. I've lost. I've just lost the page. <laughs> the seven habits. Here it is. Uh. Um, so, of course, Stephen Covey. How, how much of a coincidence. Oh my goodness, that is so cool. <laughs> okay. Great minds <laughs> would think alike. So if you read the book, you know the seven, yes. the seven um, habits of highly effective people. What, what I like that you've done here is you've talked about the bad habits, yes. right? So there, there are seven terrible habits. <laughs> um, and one is undersleeping, two is unhealthy eating habits, three is over drinking, four is lack of exercise, five overworking, six neglect of self, and seven lack of scheduling. You feel that these are the ones. They are. are. So it's funny, um, when I came across that list, I was at a salon getting my hair done. So I picked it and I forget um, what I was reading. And at first I was there like, please, like we're all effective people. Who are these people? <laughs> and by the time I was done, my mouth was open. I'm there like, oh my word, this I think I had me. five <laughs> of them. I'm there like, oh my goodness. And I think um, their habits, and it's scary that it says seven habits of highly ineffective people. Uh. The fact that it's a habit, it means you've made it a routine, That's it. which means it's a part of your life your that lifestyle. is so ingrained that at times you don't notice it. So the whole under sleeping culprit, and you're thinking, no, oh, I'm good, I can exist with four hours mm. of sleep. No, no, no. How is that affecting you physically, mentally? So they're all like you're stuck on this path that you know is not right, but you have great answers and comebacks for why you're doing this. But how, when it matters, 10 years down the road, and the doctor is telling you, mm. you needed more sleep, you should have exercised more, you should have. So I think for me, what shocked me is that they can go unnoticed. You need to be intentional and deliberate about changing them and understand why they are detrimental to you. Yeah. Because if you don't, hey, okay, that's them. It's mm. not for me. It will catch up with you. I think one bad habit that maybe was not highlighted in the magazine that you read, but I'd like to say it's, it's our phones. Oh, absolutely. That takes us away from people who love us, who want us to be present. I was baking yesterday with my kids and my brother came into the house and he's like, um, where are your phones? I tried to call you. I said, they're... I, I intentionally left them in two rooms away so I would Good. not hear them I like and that. I would not feel the need to go look at them yes. so I could be with my children. I like that. And he said, that, 
it's actually the first time I've seen you in a long time being present. Oh, wow. That's so profound. And I love what you said that, so yes, we celebrate technology and the modern conveniences, but at what cost? That's it, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I love what you said. If you think about it, right now, if I send Pinky a message, I'll expect an instant response. Exactly. God forbid if you blue tick it. I'm yeah. like, excuse me, I'm waiting. How dare you? Yes. Yeah. Yet we forget there was a time we had to go to a call box or had <laughs> a landline. Like, I need to, like, yeah. I'm either in the office. nobody would answer. Would answer. Yeah. And we survived. Like, you can get away. I have a habit where weekends I'm normally not on WhatsApp. And every time people ask me why, you'd think I say, oh, weekends, I'm not on oxygen. I just survive. Come yeah. on, they're like, really, people? Yeah. So I think it's, and I love what you did, just being intentional and having a culture where you say, this is family time. Yes. When I get to my phone, I will be present. And I love the word you use, being present, being wholly there and just um, dividing your day having time yeah. slots because then half the time da -da, something beeps so mm. they're like what it's a forward message exactly. that has in fact i keep saying if we were paid by whatsapp yeah. facebook social I media would all be millionaires we would be indeed yes. and that's the thing you see we don't we, we've forgotten the fact that it, <laughs> because we're gen x's we know that there was a time to go to the office it was nine to five Thank you. you'd clock in and you'd clock out Absolutely. and you would leave your work in the yes. office but now also because everything is you know, you're working from home, mm -hmm. so the assumption is that you can work at any time. Mm -hmm. But you should also sort of just Com take out that time yes. and say, okay, no, I will not clock on till this time, yes. and I will clock off at this time. And if something is pending, so be it. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's important because then it also circles back to what you're saying. If you're always running around, then it means even mentally, physically, you're, you're not operating at optimum. Yes. It means there's always, you're lacking somewhere. So it means when we're the children, you're short-tempered and they're wondering, huh? Because you've carried the office home yes. and vice versa. You're there like, oh, my nanny didn't show up. So it's so important to learn that when I'm at home, I'll be fully present as a parent or as a sibling, because at times it's a child. Then when I'm in school, I will be fully there. So it takes practice, but it can be done. Absolutely. Absolutely. In your book, yes. you refer to his presence. Yes. Why was this important? And his presence, of course. Yes. I mean, I don't need to explain. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, not I think, I know it was very important because it's very easy. Imagine a ship that's docking and there's no anchor or a house without a foundation. I believe that in life you need to have a foundation that's immovable, that's solid, that will always keep you grounded. Grounded, sorry. So for me, that foundation has always been going back to the Word of God. When everything around me gets crazy, that's the one place I go and I'm there like, okay, I need a word or I need something that will help me get through this. And that has always helped. So in his presence is getting to a place in your life where you decompress, shut off the phone, remove the clutter. Today it may be journaling, tomorrow it may just be sitting and listening to music, but just shutting out everything and getting to a place where you're calm, you're at peace, and just allowing yourself to to connect with yourself, if that makes sense, right? Yes, absolutely. Because then we are always there for everyone. We are always pouring out. We are always needed. We are always running, chasing mm -hmm. after this and that. But at what point do you stop? I keep saying, imagine going to the petrol station every day and they have the pump, but they're just putting air. You won't go very far. Mm -hmm. In life, that's what we do. We expect our bodies, our mind to operate 100% but we are not putting anything in. We are not slowing down. We are not refueling. We are not, I love that email for, I'm out of um, office on leave, but you can get me on my phone. Mm, <laughs> really? Like, really? <laughs> like then are you really on leave? Yeah. Like go on leave. The world won't come to an yeah. end, yeah? So we've, we don't know when to disconnect or how to disconnect. That is very important. So find what works for you. For some people it's exercise, for some people it's taking a walk, but Whatever it is, do it and be intentional about it. Don't say I'll do it after three weeks. Daily, find pockets of integrating it into your everyday yeah. life. And nourish your soul with yeah, his absolutely. presence. Yes.
I love it. Yes. Josephine, yeah. thank you so thank much. Thank you for having you are, me. Like, I, I love this. Thank you. Very Everyday much. Ways, how do we get the book? So the book is available at African Book Hub, which is at Absa Towers, ground floor. And there is a number which I can share. They can also sure. order from that. Yes. yes. Um, I will definitely link it in the video below. Obs I awesome. mean, in the bio. Thank you very All much. Lingo and <laughs> <laughs> Don't Oh worry. my gosh. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment. Josephine and I would love to hear from you. We'd love to know if you keep his presence within your world. We'd love to know what you think of the conversation that we had today. Remember, you can win a, a phone with Safaricom. I'll give you those details as well in the caption below, in the details below, in the link below. I don't know. I'm like, you know, Generation X. We still need to get <laughs> come to terms with this lingo. Thank you so much, Joseph. Thank it's you for having me. It's been a real pleasure. Me. Congratulations on this book. Thank you. I, I look forward to many, many more. Absolutely. May you have many, 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 many <laughs> more. Thank you so much, Pinky. This was amazing. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again real soon. And here's a reminder, be brave. Learn to unlearn. Bye.